Good morning, FlossTube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel about cross-stitch, mostly. Every once in a while, I throw in some other crafty kind of stuff, although today I have a lot of cross-stitch, so there'll be no other crafts from the past or anything crafty I'm doing right now besides the cross-stitch. If you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and watching. I hope you like what you see, and hit subscribe and come back for some more. And if you're a returning viewer, subscriber, whatever, thank you so much for watching again and continuing to watch. Your support means so much to me and I really do appreciate it. Moving on, life, life. Again, we are week four of, uh, we just finished week four of staying at home. And my son is actually on spring break today. Um, in Connecticut, they do it kind of funny because they do, testing of sorts in March. So unlike many people who have spring break in March, we've always had it in April. So he has today off and the whole following next week off. He was originally, there was the projection that they might go back to school uh, after that, but now schools are at, at home until at least May 20th. We've just heard this week, which I'm sure he's fine. He gets to sleep an extra hour before he has to clock into school. I make him wear something nice so that the te up top, so that the teachers, you know, see him wearing something, not nice, nice, but you know, regular clothes. And he goes around in pajama bottoms all day. So I think he's, <laughs> I think he's loving this online school to a certain degree. Obviously he misses his friends, but they seem to get together uh, over the phones and all their different ways of connecting. So. He has definitely been doing that, which is great. My daughter is in regular classes, although colleges would end, I think she ends somewhere around the beginning of May. So she's got another little bit of school to go. And then I think she's counting down um, <laughs> some of the sessions, like extra sessions for French and things like that. So I, if, she, if I were to ask her, I think she'd know exactly how much more she may have in some of these things. Uh, but. You know, it still seems to be going okay, and we are hanging in there. I find the hardest part is cooking, cooking dinners. Uh, I normally, I'm the type that goes to the grocery store two to three times a week, something you may not know about me. Um, if you've seen my Instagram, you would, because it's on my, my bio there, but I'm vegan. So in the best of times, cooking is a little bit more challenging than it would be otherwise. Uh, so I would hit the grocery store. My list would say vegetables, fruit, and then everything else I'd need. And I would go a couple times a week, see what's there, see what looks good, and then I would build meals around that. So having to go seven to ten days, I've already warned the kids that I'm not going before uh, before Easter. I'm not going anywhere near a grocery store until next week. One, because it, I think it'll be crazy busy, and two, I'm still trying to get masks. Uh, I've asked a couple people, and they're they're... They're doing their best and God bless every one of you making a mask because you are fantastic. I cannot sew uh, and so I wouldn't be able to do it correctly, I feel like, and if somebody can sew and is willing, then I'd rather pay them to do it so that I know that it's it's done correctly and safely. But uh, we haven't been able to score any yet, so I'm pushing off the grocery store at least till next week, but I've warned the kids this weekend. We have plenty. We, I mean, we have pantry stuff. It's not an issue. It just may not be fun. It might be a little bit more, normally they would complain like, ooh, this is what we have to eat, but we won't starve. We'll be fine. And then we can go get groceries next week and I can try to stock up on vegetables again. Um, kale, I can always find kale. It doesn't seem to ever <laughs> sell out of the grocery stores, especially the big bags. So I am, I am all set. But anyway, let's dive in because I got my hands on a lot of pieces of cross stitch this week. I hadn't even realized it until I was getting everything ready for the video and I do a quick iron on them. It's the only time I ever use the ironing board. I might as well give it a go. Um, and I was like, wow, there's, there's quite a bit here. So let's get started. I have a finish. Now I did put this on Instagram. It was a little wrinkly back then. Just to finish, not a finish finish, but this is Comfort Lighthouse, my carriage house samplings. Oh, I almost showed you the back. And here we go. That's it. It is done. 
I got all the mermaid hair done. I think I had to pull out a couple things because I was I was getting a little sloppy at the end. Now I did not do, you'll see at the very bottom, there is another row of what would be water. You can see against the lighthouse, that color looks fantastic in the lighthouse, but farther down underneath, it doesn't show up as much. So, and I also really didn't enjoy that pattern so much. It was kind of giving me a little bit of grief. I wasn't, I had to really pay attention and count, otherwise I'd mess up. So I didn't feel like it would do much underneath. Plus, I used, that was 712 DMC. And I used, let me make sure, 712, I think. Yes, yeah, 712. I used a skein. I have a little tiny bit left, but I used a whole skein of it for the rest of this. This is on 18 count Confederate gray, by the way, but 18 count. So I'm not sure I would have had enough for the bottom and I don't think it needs it. I like it the way it is. So we have a finish. It's my first finish of April. So that gets to go put in the finish pile. No idea what I'm gonna do with it, oh, but I like it. I like it and I really, except for a little bit of the agita of the, the water and the hair of the mermaid, I loved stitching this. I really, really did. I enjoyed all the stitches. So we finally can say done for some of these pieces that I've been carrying for several months. All right, let's dive into whips. We have a bunch of those. First off, we're gonna show you the Halloween sampler from, and I, I forget this every single time, Cottage Garden Samplings. This is done on Picture This Plus Shale. If you are new, everything is 18 count that you're gonna see. And here we go. The shale is on the computer, it shows up kind of gray, and in certain lights it does. But right now, looking at it through the light that's coming in the window, you get a light purplish tint, which I love. Love, love, love. So I finished the October row. So we did October, and I don't even remember what I did else, pumpkin and quake and I got started. The next row is very, there's four words, it's long. There's a lot to it. So I got a little bit of a start on that, not too much. I'm a little worried that the color that the letters are in, if you notice at the bottom of the pattern, some of those other things are also the color. I'm not sure, I, maybe I'll have enough, I'm not sure. And I have to check to see if I have any more in my stash of DMZ. Otherwise, I might just have to blaze an order. Uh, or, you know what, I could also change some of those other, uh, the pictures, the cat or the witch's boot. I could certainly do something else if I wanted to. But again, loving this one too. Every single stitch I am enjoying. This one I am, uh, I found a sal, Lisa at Cross by Floss. Is, it's her birthday this month, in fact, this Sunday. Happy birthday, Lisa, if you're watching. And uh, she has decided to stitch Halloween for her birthday because she loves Halloween. And she's doing it for the whole month. And she's got to sell All Hallows April. Hashtag All Hallows April. I'll link it down to below with a link to her floss tube if you're not watching her, which you really should go watch. But I will show you that, or I'll link that for you. So you'll get a chance to join in if you want. It, Halloween, there's some fun Halloween stuff out there that I want to stitch. I don't think it's gonna get started this month, but this this um, Halloween sampler will take me through April. I'm there's no way I'm finishing this. I don't think before April. What I I love stitching it, but the picture of this plus it's Ada. You know it's the 18 count of course, but it's definitely floppier. And I stitch in hand, so I can only stitch for so long on this and then I have to switch out. So that is why um, I wouldn't be spending days and days just trying to get it finished because I'd have to take a break from that fabric. I like it, don't get me wrong, but I can only do it in small bits. All right, next, Prim Village, Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. A lot of people are stitching this. A lot of people are changing the colors, really cool ideas. I barely made it this week. You know, me and houses, but I got that second house done. I was concerned when I pulled out the two colors and they're pretty yellows, they looked different. But then when I had finished this, I do this side first and then I move over to here. 
And when I first pulled off a thread for this other side, it looked almost exactly the same. In person, you can definitely tell it's two different colors. But I was concerned that they might not show up um, variation wise, but it's fine. It came out, it came out nice. Now this is also a sale. Fat Quarter Shop is doing a sale, uh, hashtag Prim Village sale. And I will, I will link, I have been linking um, right to the blog post that explains everything about the sale. So I will do that down below so that it'll take you right to their actual post that they talk about that sale. And that one, what did I do this one on? This is on Country, country Vintage Mocha. It looked, it, it was very similar in my mind to the oatmeal, I think is what it's called. And I think with all the colors, I wanted something that was a little bit more neutral so that it wouldn't take away from the pretty, pretty houses and the colors, because there's some pretty colors to come looking at the looking at the floss. And I'm doing that in DMC. Everything's in DMC that you'll see. All right, next we have Annie B's Widow's Walk. This one is on, it's called Blue Ice. Uh, it's a dyed fabric from Garibaldi's. And that's what I have so far. This flag, that was my goal. It took a, there's a lot of stitches in that flag. It's a small piece, I mean, that's the width of it. But that's a lot of stitches in the flag. I did change, I did not like the red that was charted, so I changed it to 349. I threw it next to the blue, loved it, and that's what I went with. So that's where we are right now. I did make a mistake, and this fabric definitely has a front and a back, and I accidentally stitched, stitched this on the back. And I debated back and forth, but I think it'll be okay. And you'd have to really, really, you'd have to be up in it looking at it to know, and people aren't gonna do that. So I think I'll be fine. Plus, now that I've put in the time on that flag, I'm not going back. So that is, I'm trying to see, oh, get my, my little Ziploc bag. I gotta make sure I have everything all together in one place so I can find it later on. Next, I'm telling you, I, and all of these, I legitimately put stitches in this week. Uh, I have found I need to, I, I walk every day. I have a treadmill. So whether, per, not, you know, if it's raining or not, and this time of year with allergies, it's really tough for me to walk outside anyway. So I do, I get on the treadmill every day, but I'm finding I need, because I can't really go anywhere, I'm, I'm needing some more activity. So I'm gonna, this week I stitched a lot. I think I'm gonna have to pull back on that, um, get back into my yoga and some other stuff just to keep moving around a bit because uh, I was feeling it a little bit, uh, the effects of the sitting this week. So I think this week, how much I did, I don't necessarily think that will be repeated in in weeks to come. I normally would never do have the time to do this much, but being home at the moment, I, I, I'm stitching, but I, I definitely feel like I need to pull back a little bit and get my body moving a little bit more. All right, next, Little House Needleworks, Suffrage Act. This is Stitching with the Sisterlies, has a sal that they're doing for this one to get it done by election day. It is hashtag SWTS suffrage. I will put that down below and I'll link you to their channel if you are interested in checking it out. Now this is done on coffee tea dye that I did myself. I This batch of coffee tea dyed, um, there's something else I thought I was stitching it on with as well. And I really like there's not a lot of heavy dark spots. I like the lighter type of um, dye. I don't want big blotches. So this one, I don't know, maybe I didn't keep it in there as long um, or what, but I definitely like this better than say something really blotchy. But anyway, this is what I have progress-wise. So I had the girl done except for her shoes. So I got those done. I got the flag down here. I did all of that. Um, the words and some stars I started down there. We got some more bricks and it's mortar, not grout. What was I thinking? Grout is bathroom. This is mortar. 
bricks and mortar, you'd think it would have hit me. I was watching Two Martini Stitcher, and she was talking about, do you do bricks first or grout, or, see, I said it again, or mortar first? And she had put a poll, I guess, on her Instagram. I hadn't seen that. And I'm a bricks first kind of girl, and then I'm just, it, filling in the mortar is so easy, because I know exactly what I'm doing and where it's gonna go. So that makes it a no-brainer for me. So there we go. This one, I have a tentative. I don't know if it'll get done by the end of April, but it's a potential April finish, possibly. I'm not really sure, but I have April finish with a question mark next to this one, because that is, a, is, is doable, I think. Again, depending on how much time I put stitching in it. At this point, I just have bunches of stars. I have some stuff down here. Fill in more of that. For some reason, I did not pull the floss for her face and her hands, so I, I, I don't know if I didn't have it, so I'll just need to go through and pick something else out. I did change, if you're using the DMC, this is not 822, I believe is what's called for. I pulled out 3865. I love the brightness of that against everything else. The 822 was more creamy, and it really blended right into this fabric. So I could see it on a darker fabric, it might look fantastic, but this wasn't dark enough. Oh, I'm trying not to wash it out. We have sunshine today. It was rainy and actually thunderstormy yesterday, um, but today it's nice and nice and sunny. Chilly, we're not gonna get too warm, but at least the sun is out and that makes all the difference. So that is Suffrage Act. Okay, Little House Needle Works again. Summer ABCs. I will get this finished by the end of April, but I feel like this is the never ending. It is like 152 letters in the alphabet, it feels like, rather than the traditional. Oh, so all of it, and then we're down there. I worked, I think on the flowers, the crow. I don't remember if I did. I didn't get a lot done on this one, I'm not sure why, it was, the, the watermelon took me a while. In fact, I was hoping to get the words done and I did not. But I have, I mean, I have to finish watermelon, X, Y, Z, and then just a couple pictures. But I am, I'm not, I'm not holding out hope that this will be a finish this week. It would be fantastic and great, but I think this might be a two-weeker. I don't mind this pattern. I just, for some reason, and I have the autumn ABCs. I'm gonna give myself a break before I start stitching it though. This is on country vintage mocha, vintage country mocha, whatever you call it, whichever way. And one more whip. I told you, lots and lots of whips. I pulled out my Christmas rolls. So you know I have two left. Um, so one booklet, two blocks, and this one was give more than you get. Oop. I had this nice and unwrinkly. So that is the block right there. I have one block left. I took the week before last off. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to take next week off to do the with the very last block. And it is Welcome Friends. And I don't know. Oh, at the bottom there's just a border. So I think this border is the border for the whole thing. I'll double check. Uh, Lizzie Kate had a, f if you've never done it, Lizzie Kate had a freebie on her site that gave you the words Christmas rules and it told you how to line up all the blocks. Now the one thing I did change here, and I, I'm doing all the called for colors, I haven't changed that. You know I haven't really done a lot with the buttons. I've kind of done my own thing. So she has three buttons up top there. I actually really didn't, it wasn't my favorite for the look. So I just experimented and I have no idea if this is called anything. I just took the stitches and I just kept uh, over and over and over again, putting them into holes, quarter hole, half hole, however it was and built it up. So it's like a little fringy and it's definitely a little bit bigger. It's a little fringy bow up top. I might do that on the skin skate as well. There's supposed to be a button on the skate, but I was thinking of making, didn't they used to have 
little pom poms on the skates. Am I am I remembering that correctly? You'd have like a little skate and there'd be one of the little felty pom poms on there. I think so. It wasn't on the roller skates. Cause <laughs> remember back I, I remember the roller skates were you wore your regular shoes and it was just the metal skates that you stuck your foot into and just and yeah. So I go back a ways. <laughs> we used to love those things though. We we would skate all over the Anna all over the street. All right, those are my whips, which I think is pretty good. I do have a new start. I pulled out, I, I printed off a bunch of the Be Well and Stitch uh, patterns. And I was going through trying to figure out what I started. I pulled out like two or three that I want to start first. And then I was looking through the colors suggested. And I know it's just a suggestion. But while I don't mind changing a color here or there, I really didn't want to rechart it for colors. So I went through and I looked to see what I had and I chose the Be Well from Cottage Garden sampling. So here's, you know, they have it in a couple different. They actually, the pattern itself gave you two different DMC choices. So you could make the Dove a kind of a really light blue, which I've seen stitched up on Instagram. It looks gorgeous. Um, or you could do more of the white and the cream. And I chose the white and the cream because I, with my fabric, but um, I didn't have all of the colors, so I'm gonna have to re, I haven't gotten to the part where I'm, I had to pick my own colors, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. This is on Wedgwood Blue. It's a dyed fabric from Garibaldi's. They are on Etsy. So that's what we have so far. I started that yesterday. I, I worked on this yesterday. That was my yesterday project. I had another heart here that I had to rip out, a little one I had counted wrong. Over here is a flower, and I do not have any of the colors. There was olives and those kind of colors uh, charted for this pattern. Um, first off, I didn't have any of them. Secondly, what I pulled, I grabbed some more mauves so that they were, they're not as bright, you know, this is 760s, or yeah, and 761. Those are pinks. This over here is gonna be less pinky, more mauve, I think. One of them will kind of bridge between the, the pink and more, you know, going towards more purplish tones, and then the other two are darker and go more into the mauve. So I'm fingers crossed that it looks okay, and hopefully next week I'll have it to show you as opposed to, stitching it and then ripping it all out because I don't like it. But I love this color. Uh, it is such a pleasure to look at while I'm stitching and hashtag be well and stitch. Fo uh, follow it on Instagram if you are not. I'm sure most of you are. I love looking at the pictures and what everybody is doing. So that is my new start. My goal is to get this finished for next week and I should, I mean, even if I scale back on my stitching time, I have the flower and then the branch comes around and a few more, a few more hearts. So that is the goal is to have this finished and a couple of my bigger projects hopefully are two weeks out maybe from a finish. So get them working and go from there. All right, that is my stitching for the week. Um, I do have some shopping. I went on a little bit of a fabric craze. I am loving this overdyed fabric. And I am, I'll coffee tea dye, I don't mind doing that, but I am not any way, shape or form looking at this point in time to start playing around with the writ dyes. I'll let other people do that. So I placed three different orders from three different people. So all three of these places are totally new to me um, and mostly fabric here one of the places I did get some charts from too. So I wanna show that, show those to you now. All right, so this is Vintage Needle Arts. Now I wanted, I kept one for a second in its case. She sends everything rolled up. And this is the place where I got charts too. She sent the charts separately from the fabric. I had ordered one, two, three, six different small pieces. Um, she actually, she probably could have put all of them in one of the square, long rectangular boxes that she had, but that would have squashed them. She put it three and three, 
shipping is free. So I, she just did a fabulous job making sure there's nothing crushed. Now these are a lot of neutrals. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I like neutrals and I like lighter colors, although I am dipping my toe. I mean, hello, this is brighter. I'm dipping my toe into some of the darker, brighter colors. So second orders with some of these places, you're gonna see probably things that are a little bit darker. This is Lavender Frost, which is probably not gonna show up as, it's a very light purple. Um, it is, she has two types of effects, a solid effect or a traditional. So solid, I think she said she dyes the same color twice. And it's, there's really just, it's just a solid color. And then the traditional, she dyes two different colors, you know, along the same, so you'll get a little bit of variation and modeling. The, the traditional one that I picked up is very light color, so you wouldn't get that variation as you would with the darker colors. This one here, Misty Morning, this was the traditional. And again, it's a very light blue, very, very light blue. They're all gonna come up with the light today. They're all gonna come up looking more um, white than anything. So it is very light. You wouldn't see a lot of variation, which is fine. It's a very pretty light blue. Um, next, and I haven't turned these over so I know. This is called a Timeless Gray. And again, tough to tell. It's not coming up in the color. It's a very light gray, which I like. I have gotten, I've ordered some other darker grays, but I wanted something that was a little bit more neutrally. So this works out really nice. She also sells, you know, obviously you order what size you want. So sometimes she has different sizes and she sells them for whatever price. This one is a smaller um, size and this is caramel cream. And you do see a little bit of variation on that. There is a lighter and a darker in person because um, this was a traditional. Then we have sea glass, which is a really pretty, pretty light, light green. I really like that. I'm looking for some light greens. I think Christmas stuff would look very pretty on that and something potentially for mania. I was debating on this color green or maybe a darker. And the last from Vintage Needle Arts of Fabric that I got is Portobello, and these are all Ada's. So this one is definitely darker, and much darker than I would even coffee tea dye normally, but I, 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 like, I like it a lot, and so it is a color that I think I would definitely get a lot of use out of. Now she also has charts, charts from other people, as well as charts that looks like she has herself has charted, and they're cute, so I picked up a few of those. This one was called Brunch at Buttonwood Farm. Now, ironically, Buttonwood Farm is actually in Connecticut. I have never been there. I meant to take the kids one year. It's a sunflower farm. So they have tons and tons of sunflowers. It's a great, a lot of people go there to take pictures. And once the sunflowers bloom, they sell all their sunflowers, I think, and I think it's more donations for Make-A-Wish. So it's, I, it is on my list of places to go. I think when I wanted to take the kids, when they were younger, I had missed the bloom by a week or two, and obviously, and I guess they have ice cream there too, which is supposed to be great. So this is the first one, Brunch at Buttonwood Farm. You'll see a theme here with it, with the sunflowers and the cow. So the cow is eating the sunflowers. Next, this one is called Eeny Meeny Miny Moo. This was second in the series. So cute. Then there's four in the series. I got the first three. This one is looking for lunch in all the wrong places. So now they've caught on and there's a little sign there that says no cow is allowed. So the cow can't eat. And there's one more in there. So I will link her below if you like those. I think they're so cute. <sighs> um, and last one is actually a Halloween. It's called Trick or Treat. And what's nice is she puts a little story, she put a little story on the back of all the Buttonwood Farm ones about Buttonwood Farm and then, um, you know, this one obviously, they had gotten wise to the cow's antics, you know. So there's like a little story, so it's cute. And this one she talks about Halloween and enjoying Halloween in her life. So I thought that was cute. So those are the four patterns I got from Vintage Needle Arts. And I will link that below if you are interested. All right, ooh, this is going, this is gonna be my longest video. I hope you all watch all the way to the end. I know not everybody does, which is fine if you're busy. 
Um, but I have some questions for what I need to do for fabric uh, in my mania starts. So, you know what, maybe I'll wait till next video so that I can get people to watch all the way. All right, these are from Fabrics by Stephanie. I had never um, ordered from her before, and uh, these are all Ada's. This one is called Nantucket Sky. Look at that, how gorgeous is that? So, so pretty. 18 count. The fabric, I'm sure a lot of you know her. She's, the fabric is good and, good and sturdy and really nice um, without being, you know, crazy stiff, Ada. Then this one is gingerbread. Mm, it's darker in real life. Let me see if I make it smaller, if it'll come up. There you go. Still even a little darker than that. And then the last one, I have been, I've been playing around with grays partly because I don't know what to do for Kringles. And so I've been buying all the grays and uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. This one is called Secret. And this is also the last one that I had gotten from Fabrics by Stephanie. So you can see a little bit of the variation there. Very pretty. I really love these. Now I need to go back and make another order. I, I, I get a few uh, to figure out, you know, do I like the Ada? Do I like the dying and so on and so forth. I love these. So fabrics by Stephanie. And then I went to Bestitch Me because everybody talks about Bestitch Me. And so I ordered just a couple, but uh, I really want to go back for another order. I, in fact, I signed up for the fabric of the month. I'm going neutrals um, just to, because you know I like neutrals and then I can splurge on some of the other colors. This one is Artemis. So this is also a gray, a little bit different than the Stephanie and a little bit different than the Vintage Needle Arts. And then I love this one. And see if this, this is great and this will get me into more color. This is called, what is it called? I think, oh, I think it's called Sorbet. It doesn't say it here, but I'm 99% sure it is Sorbet. Look at that, how gorgeous is that? I want to find something to stitch on this right away. I love this. Love, love, love this fabric. And that is Be Stitch Me. So I will link that down below as well. And those are what I bought this week. I have a few more things coming. Not a lot, a few different things. Uh, if I run out of floss, I might need to make a floss uh, order and then the fabric takes a few different weeks so I might have a look at the fabric places and see what they have. Plans for the coming week I am going to continue working on all of my current uh, starts hopefully get a finish on this and maybe have a new start. I've decided for April I'm doing little starts so whether or not I do another be well and stitch or I might do another one of those summer signs from Tiny Modernist. Modernist. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but one of those. I figure because looking ahead for Mania, I've got big pieces mostly picked out for Mania. I'm going to do four starts, one a week, and they are big pieces. So I thought maybe for April, some doable small pieces. And even if I don't finish them in April, they are potential finishes for May because I am not going to finish anything I start in May for Mania. I mean, Kringles alone, I have it here, Kringles alone is going to take forever. So I will talk more about that next week since I stitched so much this week. This video is my longest video to date. So I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you are busy watching and doing what you got to do to keep yourself safe. And I appreciate you spending the time with me. I hope you are well. I hope you stay well, stay healthy. If you celebrate, happy Easter. If you celebrate, happy Passover. And we will get through this together. Every week we have gotten one week farther. We will do this together. My stitchy friends, I hope you have a great day. And until next time, happy stitching.